Now let me just remind you the story of the Shunammite. The Shunammite was barren. This first, uh, second Kings chapter four, we're not turning there, but I'm going to tell you the story. She was barren and the prophet prophesied to her. And when he prophesied, the woman, her, she and her husband, she said, you know, prophet, don't tease me. I've been heartbroken about this for decades. Don't tease me. You know, my husband's old. I'm not old. My husband's not old, but neither am I hoping to have a baby, okay? So, just to be clear. <laughs> she said, okay, God, here's the situation. We've been, we've, been, we've been praying for this for decades, but it hasn't happened. And now my husband's old. Come on, when the prophet spoke, life came into that man's loins. Life came into that woman's womb. And things that looked impossible became possible. Do not give up on God from believing him for your miracle. Do not give up on God from believing God for your family. Do not give up on God for believing a turnaround in your finances. Do not give up on God because he is the God of the turnaround and he is the God of the impossible and he has a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. Come on, it was dead. And life came forth. Upper rooms are a place of life. Do you know what this Shunammite had done? She had taken a part of her own house and she had built this upper room for the prophet to stay in. The prophet represents the voice of God. Listen, every one of us ought to be building an upper room in our family. Every one of us ought to be building a place in our life for the voice of the Lord. Every, you know, every time Elisha would come to town, uh, he would just pass through. He would minister, he would pass through. You know what? There's a lot of churches today that are happy to invite a prophet to stand on their pulpit, but they don't want to build a place in their house for the prophet to live. There's a lot of saints today that are happy to receive a word from a prophet, but they don't want to build a place in their own life to take the responsibility to hear the voice of God for themselves. She built an upper room, a place of dedication to the voice of God, a place of worship, a place of hearing God's voice above a circumstance. And she built that at her own expense, at her own cost in her own house. We know that she got pregnant. She had a baby a year later. And that boy grew up. I'm sure he was the delight, the apple of his mom and dad's eye. But you know when he was a teenager, he was out working in the field. And he said, my head, my head. And he fell over dead. So you know what the shooter might did? Listen, some of you might have had some things die. Hopes, dreams, goals visions, things that God's spoken to you. Maybe you've even felt a little bit hopeless about some of the prophetic words you've received. But you know what the Shunammite did? She took that boy when they brought him in from the field and they, she carried him up to the room she built for the prophet and laid him on the prophet's bed. Listen, if we haven't built a room like that in our house, in our family, in our business, in our church. If we haven't built a room like that, we have nowhere to take things when we go through grief, when we go through crisis. Have you built a place for the voice of God? Because I'm telling you, the voice of God is as tangible as possible, as tangible as it could ever be, especially in a time of crisis. So you know what she did? She took that boy up. She laid him down in the room, in the upper room. Then she ran and got the prophet. She said, listen, prophet, I didn't ask for this boy. <laughs> you, you prophesied him, you come raise him up. Sometimes we've got to get a hold of the word of the Lord. Sometimes we cannot let go of it. We cannot say, oh, well. We cannot just say, this is a tragedy. Sometimes we've got to get a hold of the word of the Lord, and we've got a war, a warfare with a prophetic word that's come over our life, that's come over our city, that's come over our nation. How many know our nation needs upper rooms to spring up all over this land? This house is an upper room. This house is an upper room, and we know the story is that the prophet came up, and he raised your son from the dead. God is going to make Vision Church a place of revival, a place of resurrection life, 
a place where the impossible becomes possible, a place where our prayers go up before heaven and things begin to shift and things begin to turn around and things that we've waited decades for, sometimes things we've waited a lifetime for, suddenly come to pass. Hear the word of the Lord. I'm stirring you this morning. What does this have to do with the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost is in you. The promise keeper is in you. Come on, he's not out there sitting on a throne. He's inside of you. The promise keeper is here inside of you to keep his promise and to keep his word. This happened in an upper room. I'm going to read this to you out of the, uh, out of the Passion Translation. It says, on the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in one place. Suddenly they heard the sound, the roaring sound of a groaning spirit, of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house from out of the heavenly realm. Could you hear it this morning? The roar of the wind was so overpowering it was all anyone could bear. Then all at once a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. They were all filled. Listen, they were filled and equipped. Everybody say filled and equipped. So that's what this, this word actually means, is it actually means to be completely furnished and equipped for service. Lavishly furnished furnished and equipped for service. How many know the word of the Lord this year is that it's a year of, of lavish supply. That's what 2023 means in the Greek. That number 2023 actually means lavish supply. Just lift your hands up. God wants to give you lavish supply. Some of you have been filled, but you've not yet been furnished. God, I thank you, God, that right now, God, you're not just filling us. You're furnishing us, and you're equipping us, God. Lord, I lay hold of that anointing of Elohim that was spoken, and I thank you, God, for the anointing for creativity that is coming upon minds right now. God, that is breaking us out of the way that we've always thought, that's breaking it out, breaking us out of the parameters and the status quo and the and the and the limitation of our own experience, God, break us in to a whole new experience. Break us into a whole new place of creativity. We loose the anointing of the Creator upon us now, God, to, fur to, to fully furnish us and fully equip us for your service in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Listen, we need a new creativity in our business. We need a new creativity in ministry. We're breaking out of the old, breaking into the new. We got, we got to believe that. Amen? 